No Nuremberg Toy Fair in January 2021 because of COVID, so let's go virtual. So no Nuremberg Toy Fair this year, and every year I normally meet Bruce Hay of Drake Collectibles, and this time we're meeting virtually. I'm in the UK, and Bruce, you are in... The Drake Shop, Brisbane, Australia. So welcome down under, Ian, and to all your fans and viewers. Yeah, well, it's uh, 11 o'clock at night, or coming up to midnight shortly, so... Uh... Must be a nice early start for you this morning. Uh, nine nine thirty. So I've been here for a little while. <laughs> okay. So um, how are you anyway? Have you uh, escaped the COVID and everything? Yeah, look, we've been we've been pretty fortunate. My uh, myself and my family and all my friends, we we haven't had any real real issues or problems. Um, every time I sneeze for a while, they'd send me off here to get a COVID test because of the amount of time I spend in China, but. Uh, all, all negative there. So we've been fairly fortunate down under. Uh, our politicians and things, some have copped a bit of flack, but I think they've done some pretty good jobs when you consider, you know, the coronavirus impact on Australia to the rest of the world. So a um, little bit tough uh, working with the Chinese at the factory and not being able to go there and keep an eye on them. But yeah. uh, fortunately, we've sort of been working with a lot of good, good companies there for a long time. Uh, they know what I expect, and we haven't had too many dramas from there. So, so, so how how has it did it actually impact your your business in twenty twenty then? And, uh. Yes, it, look, it it did. Um, the factory closed for their Chinese New Year CMY, which is normally around the end of January. I think it's this week they they close over there, and uh, they were about three or four weeks later coming back. So they didn't start coming back till the end of March. Mm. And when they did start coming back and starting to work, the factories were running at, you know, 40 or 50 percent. So they were way down. Uh, it, it sort of impacted the, the flow of the product. We'd made some changes in the way we were doing the stuff to try and get new releases, uh, more quantity, less SKUs every sort of six weeks. So they never really caught up on the on the couple of months that they lost. Yes. When they first went back, we actually did printing here in Australia and sent it to them, and we've continued to do that with some of the items simply because the factory was back, but all the associated factories weren't back working. So that sort of worked out fairly well for us there. It gives us a bit more Australian content, and uh, we can keep a better eye on things. So the other the other big impact that it's had is the cost of shipping. Uh, shipping products to Australia, our our shipping cost has sort of doubled or almost tripled in in some areas there. Uh, boats, containers are getting scarce, uh, getting them in, COVID, COVID testing, delays, all the rest. It's all had a massive impact on that. Yes. So hopefully we're in 2021 now. Uh, in Australia, we can we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm hoping it's not the train. And uh, we can forge forward and and continue picking up. But uh, I don't think either of us had any idea of what was about to happen last time we spoke in Nuremberg uh, and, and the way that the, the world sort of spiralled out of control because of this COVID virus. I can imagine one of the areas that must have been maybe a bit more difficult for you was like in uh, project development, where you're developing a new model, because presumably you would... Mm -hmm you know, go to China fairly regularly to sit down with your colleagues and uh, tell them what you want, but you've had to presumably do that remotely. Yeah, look, it, it, it does make it a bit more difficult. Like, I, I normally go to the factory at, at least four times a year when we've got a major shipment done to, uh, to review the quality, to have a look there, to get them prepped for the next project to go online, and then to get them ready for the next project. Now, product development um, is is definitely an issue. Uh, you, have, you have to, you know, you can send items backwards and forwards, but uh, there's there's a lot lost in translation sometimes. Yes. Uh, reviews by photos is is also hard. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been a bit of a struggle, a bit more tougher than than we expect. I had uh, I had a couple of brand new projects. Uh, at different stages of tooling, which are yet to be announced, and we just sort of held them, held them back, and held on to them. But the other problem I had, I suppose, um, you know, when when COVID started, was uh, a lot of people were losing their jobs. Mm. Uh, is, is you know, is is a luxury, expensive diecast 
model replica. Yes. Um, is, is, is there going to be funds for that, you know? You, you can't feed your family with it. So, you know, with, with many of the orders, we thought, will we, will we do this or won't we do this? So, um, you know, I spoke to some of our, our major retail customers and they were, they were confident. So we, we forged ahead with, with new projects and, um, and some new models and, and all the rest. So 2021, hopefully, uh, will be better. 2020 was one of our, our better years. It didn't go as planned. We didn't release all the things we wanted to release, but um, they're coming. They're coming very soon. So looking forward to 2021, you've got some uh, work uh, projects ongoing and things to announce, and we'll get we'll talk about some detail shortly, and you'll, you'll give us some of your news, which will be interesting for people. Um, how do you see 2021, though, in a sort of bigger sense going forward? Well, look at, at at this stage, it's it's all positive. Um, we've we've had one model release. It was only a, a very small model run, but um, you know the the demand was there for the product. We we, we probably should have had three times the amount, but it was uh, an old tooling model that we'd already made. You know, I think twenty nine thousand of these models, and uh, it was the the T nine oh nine truck. And we've invested heavily in new tooling for the T909. Right. So we had to produce it because we had a private livery model to make. And uh, so I only wanted to do the bare minimums because collectors are complaining, you know, it's just another repaint and all the rest. And we had all this new tooling. So that went very well. So focused on that, I think moving forward will be a, will be a strong year. So uh, fingers crossed there. 2021 is also a... A Brisbane truck show year. Every two years, we have a, uh, a major international truck show in Brisbane. At this stage, it's going ahead. Uh, we've had to make some some alterations to our site uh, for personal distancing and COVID requirements and all the rest of it. So it'll be a bit of a new look thing. But at this stage, it's going straight ahead, and we've got some great models we're going to unveil there. So, and for the benefit of all the, of everyone listening, when 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 is that held? It's uh, the third weekend in May in Brisbane. Okay. Okay, so there's a, a date for people to, to think about. So should we just move yeah. on to, then to um, what you actually have got that's new and you can talk about? Spoke briefly about the T909s. Okay. So maybe we'll, we'll run there. So the T909 was the first model we released. It was a very basic tooling. It was based on a, an NQ truck. It had no bells and whistles. You have to remember when this started, it was a PR activity for Drake. And uh, if I had my time again, I would have done it completely different to what we did back then. We, we took the basic thing, and I think even that back then cost us 80000 US dollars. Uh, so what we've done is we, we've done some new tooling for that. We've upgraded the toolings to something that we, we desperately need. So there's a lot of nice T999 trucks out there, but with the old tooling, we couldn't do them the proper justice they required. So We've now got the cabin flarings, the party hats, spider wheels. Could you hold it up Texas a bit, Bruce? Bars. Hold it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's sound we can see. Uh, Texas style bars, the step box, different air cleaners, mud guards. So, so that's looking good. And also the square cut pipes, which we've never had before, the bobtails, square fuel tanks that we never had before. So, with all these, we can now do quite a nice arrangement of T909 trucks. So for those, those that uh, look at our part numbers, if you look at some of the part numbers of some of the, the, the latest release trucks, there's big gaps between them, up to 100. That's because there's all these allocations of part numbers for all these really nice trucks. So when you look at this tooling here, there were 75 T909 directors made a few years ago, wow. and uh, there's some really nice trucks there. So that's something to, to look forward to this year. What sort so, of rough, rough time scale on that, Bruce? Oh, look, they'll probably be um, sort of mid-year. Okay. So uh, COVID, COVID. With all the normal if yeah. not, and maybes. <laughs> COVID are, 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 are reliant, I suppose, yeah. yeah so. Sure. So that's good. They'll, they'll come in our standard plain colours of our, our blacks, our reds, our whites, 
with our whites, we've started doing white with a red chassis, black chassis, and a blue chassis. That just gives uh, a bit of contrast. For those people who want to do a Code 3 model, or and we, we've, we've done the same thing with all our flat top trailers and our vans. We've got white chassis, white black chassis, white red chassis, white blue chassis, just to, to settle that. But, yeah, something to look out for, some really nice, nice, nice T99 trucks coming. Okay. So I'm excited about that one. Okay. So next is, while we're, while we're on the tooling side of things, we did some extra tooling for our C509. So the C509 is the largest registrable sort of Kenworth truck in Australia, and they're fairly well used in heavy haulage. So some of the things that we haven't had before with them is the square cut pipes. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with the way these come out. Uh, some do new they, tooling do, 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 they, do those pipes have holes? Yes, they do. Oh, I can st stick my pen in it. Okay. Yeah, it's about three millimetres deep. That's why we never had them before, because the fact that they used to be just flat on the top, yeah. they come out on the fat cabs, and, and I never liked it. Yeah, so that, that's a good, a good addition. Um, the heavy haulage mud guards for the back, the big toe coupling on the back so you can hook it up into multiples, and then there's also an additional toe coupling on the front. That's just got to be the two-sided tape in it in the box. So you can put it on or take it off if you want to or put it anywhere else. So that was the easiest way to fit them because all the bull bars, all the bumper bars we have, all have different configurations. So that was sort of the best there. But this, also with these, we now have the uh, bobtail spoiler for the roof and the party hat as well. So that's tooling once again that we never had before. So they're going to be very good. We've got some of them that we'll be releasing them soon. There's some stunning colours coming in those. So that's, uh, is that, again, is that a mid-year or is that sooner? Some of them will be released in the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay. All right, so that's very soon. Okay. I think they're, they're in transit throughout the world as we speak um, to, to Europe and, um, and also to the US and Asia. So It's a worldwide release. A worldwide release, yeah. You've come a long way, Bruce. <laughs> yes, yeah, we have. <laughs> I guess one of the other products that I'm, I'm pretty happy about um, is our box loader. Mm. This is a really, really trick model, this one. Um, full of working parts, 40-foot box, 20-foot box, 40-foot box. Could you hold it up again a bit? That's yep. it, yep. Like that. So all the cranes will work. The stabiliser legs will work. Mm -hmm. so yep. It fits the standard WSI container. Uh, there's a little hook that goes up underneath the container. We couldn't do it through the side like the real ones do it. It's, it's just physically impossible unless you start screwing things in and it just doesn't look right. But uh, this has got a lot of nice little decals, operating decals and clearance decals and things on there, uh, nicely detailed engine. Mm. So, yeah, they will come with. All the, all the plain colours will come first. The plain colour ones come with the Drake Group container. This is the one that we take to all our shows. This is, this is a highly sought-after container, this one is. Well, the real one is anyway because it's full of nice models. <laughs> so that will come with them. So that container and the uh, another uh, you, you mentioned it fits WSI containers. So is, is that yes. what will when you if you issue the model with containers, will they be WSI containers? In fact, yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, every every model comes with a container, so that way um, the collector's got one to put on. If they don't have a WSI container, then there's a the problem. So all the standard ones will come with the Drake one, the standard color ones. Uh, we have got quite a list of uh, company liveries to do. Some of them will come with a container that matches okay. the livery. Uh, and we've also got quite a few Australian brand containers that we're going to release along the way to go with it. So uh, one container will come with it. Other containers are available separately. So we've, we've produced you know, twice as many, some with there, some separate sale there. So they'll come in a nice box like this. 
Mm -hmm. Showing this model on the front of it. So the the, the silver and the grey is sort of the uh, box loader corporate colours. Box loader is a French company. Mm -hmm. uh, box loader by Ophi. So with all the bits and pieces. Yep. And a very nice little uh, functions and features thing inside it as well. Also it comes with some witches hats. So those people that want to set up their little diorama, they can put the witches hats because the witches hats actually sit on the little witches hat holder. So these have been in development for for a time because I think you first showed me these. Uh, oh, feels like two years ago. Maybe it was. Or maybe it wasn't. But um, obviously they've taken their time to come through. But no doubt you've been perfecting yeah. them. They they were first announced. The 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 tooling model was displayed at the Brisbane Truck Show 2019. Yeah. So um, look, it, it normally takes sort of 12 to 14 months to to properly develop a Drake model. I, I say a Drake model because you know we're we're renowned for a lot more bells and whistles than some of the other brands out there. Yes, uh, the other brands still have a great model, but we sort of go this next step further. And I'm pretty happy with the box loader. Um, it's it's got a lot of functions and features in it. A little bit challenging to do. Mm -hmm. So we you do have to, uh, which will, will be on the the information with you. Do have to put a couple of pins in the legs. Just because it will hold the container out in position, but over a period of time, um, it starts to sag a little bit. So you need to put a couple of little pins in there. No different to a crane. Um, we've got to remember this is 50 times smaller, and it doesn't have hydraulics like the real one. It's just friction on the cylinder. Yes, yes. So, okay, so we also have um, some new production runs of, of some trailers, a bit of a restock of some of our uh, flat top trailer range plus a few new liveries so here's our standard freighter but this is the musket trailer to go with the two musket t900s we've released so a uh, lot of lot of bling on this one if you when you get in really close there's pinstriping and things like that on the frame we, we couldn't get the pinstriping down the combing rails we've got to remember that you know this is 150 scale so it's it's 50 times smaller than the real thing. So anything which is, a, you know, 100, 100 millimetres or four inches in, in, in your language uh, is only two millimetres wide here. So 750 of these, these are coming. We've also got new ones for toll, uh, a few new colour ranges, our metallic blues, uh, an all red one for the first time, plus a restock of some of our red and white ones. So that's going to be, that's going to be good. They're uh, they're arriving here shortly. So, have they been a popular model for you? We we have yeah. We've done quite a few of them. Um, they they complement so many of the trucks we yes. do. Yeah. Now that we've got them, we've, we've done a lot of trucks. Originally, we were all sort of heavy haulage in the beginning because you know Drake. Yes, we build like Otis. So now with the freighter range, it's allowed us to do so many more. And now with the party hats. And things like that for the 509s and the T900s and the uh, 909s, that then gives us that ability once or more to build more bits and pieces. So we also, on, on the freighter range, we have uh, curtain siders coming. We have a, a restock of our easy liners, plus for the first time some torque liners coming out. So they'll rapidly be followed by the wet van and the dry van which is part of the Maxi Trans family, but it's the Maxi Cube range. Mm -hmm. So they'll come as a, uh, a, a B trailer and we'll start bringing out some road train dollies as well, sort of mid-year on their own for the first time. So lots to look forward to there. Many, many liveries we can do there. So I'm, I'm excited about 2021. We've also got some new steerables coming, some new liveries, some new colours, and... Uh, a couple of brand new trucks too, right? So it's going to be a very big year. Are these are these these brand new trucks ones that you can't mention? These are trucks I can't mention. Well, why did you mention uh, them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about all the colours, the the, the the colour variations there. I I think I've asked you this before, but um, it's always interesting for me because if 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 a truck owner or company is looking at this and thinking, yeah, I'd like some 
some of I've got some of those trucks on my in my fleet, and I would like a set of models in in the same color. How how, how would they go about getting one? Well, what we we do a little bit of it. Um, look, to sell a model, it's got to be a a, a, a very popular color or very popular kind of thing. So uh, our like WSI have their white range. Well, we have our white with different colors, the chassis range, the black, red, and the blue. So if somebody's got a fleet of vehicles, they can purchase these. It's it's easy to code three. Code three is when somebody alters a model and puts like a decal on it or a stripe. They can do that. Uh, a lot of a lot of our liveries come from people who have contacted this and said, "Hey, I've got this truck. Yeah. Um, I'd like a model." So. We, we negotiate into it. We work out what we're going to do. There's a fair bit of work yeah. that goes into producing a livery model of a truck. People wouldn't, might not understand that, but what they have to do is they have to work with me to produce and to uh, approve an e-sheet. An e-sheet is what the plan is to make a model. So to do that, they have to send me a heap of photos, high-resolution photos from different angles, or we have to go there. They also have to supply me uh, uh, paint spray out colours of each individual colour. That gets a little bit hard because some of the, the pins and pins and scrolls and things like that on these pin lines and that are all done by hand. And they mix the colour up, mm. so you have to have to then check those colours to make sure those are right. So there's a lot of work yeah. that goes into producing a, a livery model, and that's why we we don't get too far advanced with what's coming as far as livery is concerned. Because these people, they, they think it's like a, like they get a buzz out of it. They think it's an honor. Here's their model. They can see their truck on the internet. So, you know, we release one and, and they're all excited about it. If we tell somebody that, you know, in, in uh, you know, December, there'll be a Doolan truck coming or a memory truck, which is, you know, our, our, our premier league sort of thing. We put a picture up on Facebook of, of this new livery truck and the first 20 comments are on there about, When's the dual one coming? When's the memory one coming? Yeah. So that's very negative marketing for our customers, which is what we don't want. So that's why we don't get too far advanced with that. As far as plain colours are concerned, um, it looks a little bit governed a bit by Packard to a degree. You know, they might say, hey, look, we, we'd really like this colour truck. We'd really like that colour truck. Or we would also talk to them and say, hey, um, what, what's, what's the popular colour for 2021? What's, what's everybody looking for? So the most popular Kenworth truck sold in Australia is white with a red chassis. They mostly start like that, and then they get flashes or stripes or, or things like that on there. Or dirty. But, um, <laughs> or dirty, yeah. Yeah, in some places of Australia, very dirty too. Yeah. So that's sort of the way that's, that's evolved. Um, or there might be somebody who says, you know, I really like this colour. Um, you know, I want, want some of my trucks done, so we might do that and then... You know, he, he might only want 10 or 20. So we need to produce a minimum of 100. Out of yeah, 10. I think that's, that's, a, that's my, my MOQ. So if there's, a, if there's a truck there that, you know, a customer wants and, if, uh, you know, we, we might only produce a couple of hundred of them and um, put some decals onto him and sell the rest. We've also done quite a few models for companies that have an anniversary or a special occasion coming. We've done a few of them of late. They've never gone to the collector's market. They would be highly sought after. Yes. And we don't normally announce them or tell people about them because as soon as the collector hears about them, then that transport company uh, has to employ three people to answer the phone <laughs> for the next few weeks with everybody trying to get them. We've got some new ballast boxes coming again, some restock of the popular colours, plus then also quite a few new livery ones. We can't go too much into the new livery ones at the moment because then you'll know what trucks are coming and then it's just no fun. You know, it's, it's like opening your Christmas present mm -hmm. and you already know what's in there. Yeah, good. Okay, well, Bruce, uh, it's been very uh, interesting, I think, and helpful to tell us what, what you've got in the works and what's coming. And uh, mm -hmm. wish you well going through the rest of 2021 and look forward to some of these uh, trucks you can't mention. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll look forward to uh, catching up with you next year yeah we'll do that yeah. thanks so much yeah okay okay thank you thank you